Hello, welcome back to the Craft Mug. Today we're making scones, or scones, whatever you want to call them, tomato, tomato. They're incredibly light, with a lovely golden bottom, and they're easy to make. You can throw them together in five minutes, and they take about 12 or 13 minutes in the oven. Uh, you can keep them plain if you want to. You can also add some currants or some raisins or some sultanas will also work. It's entirely up to you. Growing up in Ireland, my mother always made scones. Everyone around us actually made scones, all those houses. And they're uh, really a part of my childhood. So I'm going to make a very traditional one with just a few raisins or something in it. But come on, let's get in that kitchen. Here is everything you will need to make these delicious scones. Here I have 450 grams of sulfur-raising flour. I have two teaspoons of baking powder. And I have 50 grams, which is one and three quarter ounces of sugar. I have 100 grams of butter. This is unsalted. It's at room temperature, so slightly soft. I cut it while it was really cold to make it easier to blend into the flour. Here I have two eggs and a little milk here. And I'll explain that in just a moment. This is completely optional. Maybe a handful of raisins or sultanas. I'm using golden raisins, but this is completely optional. My flour was a little bit lumpy, so I've decided to sieve it. I'm going to add my baking powder and sieve the two of those together. And to add my sugar, your eggs, add enough milk to bring it up to 300 milliliters and lightly beat your eggs. Stir in the sugar. Now we're going to add our butter. We have to blend this in to the flour. I'm just going to stir it with a fork first. You could use a pastry cutter, but in all honesty, it's much easier to use your hands to blend in the butter. So scoop down, pick up a small handful, and between your thumb and your fingers, push the butter down. You literally are squeezing it into the flour. If I can show you that, there, like that. And you let the butter drop off the tips of your fingers, like so. Continue doing that with both hands until it looks like horse meal. It's good to move quickly. Don't want the butter to get too soft. So keep going in down to the bottom. And I'll show you what it looks like in about two minutes. Okay. I'm happy with that. That was less than two minutes. Let me see if I can show you what it looks like. I can still feel little lumps in there, but that's fine. I'm not going to use all of this probably. And um, if I'm getting close to it, I'm still going to hold back a little drop at the end. All right. This is going to be a pretty sticky dough, you'll see. So I've put in about 250 ml here. Stir it to fork. You'll see it begin to come together. I want to get my hands in there to feel it. It needs a little bit more. come together as a dough and it's, it's a little sticky. So this is perfect. This is just where we want to it. So I'm picking it off my fingers. Lightly flour your surface. I'm going to roll the dough out. Get anything off the bottom of the bowl. Lovely. Just gonna spread it out a little bit. Did you think I've forgotten? I'm going to put some golden raisins into this. Let's fold it over. I don't want too many. 
That handful was 75 grams, by the way. More than enough for something this size. All right, I don't want to overwork this. So really I'm just bringing it back together and rolling it out, pushing it out rather with my hands until it's about three quarters of an inch in thickness. And that is about right. That's it. This plate with the flour is so I can dip my cutter in it. This pastry cutter is two and one quarter inches. Two and a half inches will work too. It will be six centimeters. And now we just cut them out. How pretty is that? Okay, we're just gonna push this leftover dough together and back to cutting. With our leftover egg and milk, mixture. Let's just brush the tops of these before we place them on our baking sheet. The baking sheet I have put a, a little piece of parchment paper on it. You could also use a silt pad if you have one. I do, but I have no idea where it is. Oh my god. Just had enough room to squeeze these on. I'm going to pop these into the oven for about 13 to 15 minutes should be a pale golden brown, have risen a bit, and then we'll take them out and put them on a cooling rack. Lovely golden brown on the bottom. Hot, hot. Uh, they have risen and they smell lovely. We're going to let these cool for a minute. I'm gonna put them on a wire rack and then we're going to give them a try. Mm. Welcome back. Look at those beauties, thrown together in minutes. Really, anyone can make these. So I guess we'll have to give it a quick try. <laughs> now you can have these with any toppings you'd like. Um, some people like to have just butter and a bit of jam. And of course, as you know, in England, they love to up that by putting clotted cream on it as well. I don't have clotted cream. I might have a little bit of whipped cream somewhere. <laughs> Anyhow, so I'm going to have a little bit of butter on one. Keep it plain and simple. Let's have a taste. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Crunchy on the outside. Just a nice crispness. And inside, Beautiful, soft, delicate scone. Mmm, that's lovely. I'll be having more than one of those, I can assure you that. All right, for the second one, I'm just going to spoil myself. Uh, you can use strawberry jam, or like I'm using, raspberry jam, which is something I like. And I have here, of course, is the whipped cream. Oh my goodness. Mmm. Right. Um, wow. It's delicious. It is a very authentic scone from home. Um, I think it's, uh, whether you have it with butter or with jam, butter and jam, or clotted cream or whipped cream, I think you're really going to like it. Again, simple to start to get. You can adapt it to the sweetness you like. It's not overly sweet, which is perfect for me. Now, if you want to have this a little bit sweeter, when we brush the top of them with the leftover egg and milk wash, you can sprinkle some sugar over them at that point before putting them into the oven. Or if you have some lovely brown demerara sugar, you can actually sprinkle that on top too. You need to just add a bit of sweetness. But to be honest, I like them a little bit plain. <sighs> like myself. Anyway, try them. I think you'll love them. And thanks a million for, for watching. And uh, I really appreciate it. Please tell your friends to uh, subscribe to me. Uh, please comment. I would love to hear from you. And until next time, see you soon. Bye.